Hi, I'm Sean Gannon, and this is Minute Math, and I'm going to show you how to solve the hardest easy geometry problem. First, why is it the hardest easy geometry problem? Well, it's hard because it's a difficult problem to solve, but it's easy because it just uses basic knowledge of geometry here. Okay, so your average geometry student should know how to solve this. I'm going to solve for x. We're given this triangle here, and it has all these certain lines that happen to it. Angle C, B, A is broken up to be 60 and 20 degrees, and there's some other information here, like B, C, A is 50 and 30, and we have to find that x here. So I will first want to, you to try to solve this problem, see if you can do it. Pause the video, see if you can figure it out. Hopefully you tried and you got it. If you did it, keep on watching. And I guess if you did get it, keep on watching anyway, see if you were correct. The first thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna create a new point G down here, okay? Now this point G, I'm gonna split up uh, angle C, B, E, and when I create that line G into here, and I'm gonna split, split up that 60 degrees to be 40 and 20 degrees. So let's go do that here. I'm gonna erase this 60, and I'm drawing a line such that this is broken out to be 60 and uh, 40 and 20. So don't judge my straight lines freehand. Let's say this is the 40 degree one that I wanted, and this is the 20 degree. Now with this information here, we're gonna take what we know about triangles, and we're gonna use this a lot here. We know that the sum of all the interior angles of any triangle is equal to 180 degrees, and that isosceles triangles have uh, congruent side lengths, and their base angles are the same as well, okay? So with that information, we're gonna try to find the measurement of angle C, G, B. Okay, now we know all triangles add up to be 180 degrees, but what about uh, right here? Well, 20 plus 50 plus 30 plus whatever the angle here is CGB is has to equal 180. So if we take 180 and subtract 50 and 30, well, we get 100, subtract 20, and we get 80. Okay, so I'm gonna put a little mark here so it's for, for me to see, and we have 80 degrees here, and I'll write it up here. The measurement of angle C. G, B is equal to 80 degrees using that information. Now that we know that measurement of angle C, G, B is 80 degrees, we know that G, C, B is also 80 degrees, the 50 plus 30. And so right here we have two base angles of that triangle that are the same, meaning that there are lines, we have an isosceles triangle here, that these lines are congruent. So, that equals, that 80 degrees is equal to the measurement of angle G, C, B, and like I said, therefore those lines are congruent, B, C is equal to B, G. And this is going to be a common theme throughout this problem. Now what we're going to do is I'm going to look at this 80 degrees right here we said for C, G, B. We know a straight line adds up to be 180 degrees, and so the measurement of angle here, E, G, B, has to add up to be 180. We subtract 80 from that, and we get 100 degrees here. Again, we now look at this triangle, triangle B, G, E. We know all triangles have to add up to be 180 degrees. Well, if we have 100 degrees here, right, and then 40 here, we subtract both of them from 180, we get another 40 degrees right here. And so the measurement here of angle G, E, and B is equal to 40 degrees. Now we're going to apply, again, what we know about isosceles triangles. If our base angles are both 40 degrees, that means length GE is equal to GB. So we have that length here showing that they're the same, and so I'm going to say that GE is equal to that length BG, right there. Now of course here, our triangles aren't really drawn to scale, so bear with me here. Now we're going to take a look at triangle BCF. Notice we have that's a 50 degrees right here, 20, 40, and 20. And we know they all add up to be 180 degrees. So we can find what the measurement of angle CFB is. 
Well, we take 180 and subtract 50, subtract 20, subtract 40, subtract 20 from that, and we get 50 degrees again. So we have 50 degrees here, and again, what do we notice? Well, we have another isosceles triangle. We have base angles of 50 and 50 degrees, so that means the side lengths there are congruent, and so BC is equal to BF here. And so I'll write that down here, BC is equal to B. F. Now I'm going to do something tricky. I'm going to draw a line from G to F. And in doing so, I'm going to have to erase this 100 degrees, but I don't want to forget that that's there. So I'll make a little note to myself right here on the side that we have 100 degrees kind of going on here. Note. So I'm going to draw a line here from G to F, and again, bear with my line. And we're going to try to find some angle measurements here. Well, one thing I noticed that lines BG and BF are the same length, meaning we have an isosceles triangle here. So we know the uh, interior angles for triangle, so, so I noted here that we're working with it, B, G, F. We know it's isosceles and we have to add up to 180 degrees. So 20 and the 40 here give me that 60. So I have a total of 180 degrees minus the 60 degrees Okay, now we know that these two angles right here, BFG and BGF also are congruent, they're the same. So whatever that's left over, they have to split them between the two of them, we divide that by two, and that has to equal the measurement of, let's say, uh, BGF, which is equal to the measurement of angle BFG, the big friendly giant. And what does that come out to be? Well, 80 minus 60 is 120, divided by 2, again, is 60 degrees. So actually, what we have here is not only an isosceles, isosceles triangle, but an equilateral triangle. We have 60 degrees right here, okay, and 60 degrees there, but if it's equilateral, all being 60 degrees, this side length, GF, is equal to side length, let's say, BF to label it here. So now, remember when I said that this right here, BGF, was 60 degrees, but together that made 100, meaning that inside here we have to have a 40 degrees, and so the measurement of angle EGF is equal to 40 degrees. We now have enough information, really, to solve this problem. Notice again our isosceles triangle, and again, not really drawn to scale, but GE and GF are the same length, meaning that their base angles are congruent, okay? So that means that this angle right here, I can write as 40 plus X degrees. And we know that all triangles add up to be 180 degrees on the interior angles, so let's go add them up. We have a 40 right here for angle FGE, plus that 40 plus X, plus 40 plus X a second time, and that's equal to 180 degrees. Well, 40, 40, 40, we add them up, that gets us a 120, subtract that to both sides, and we have a 60 over here, and X and X is a 2X. Divide both sides by two, and X equals 30 degrees. And there we have it. Our value for X here is a 30 degrees. Did you get X to be 30? If you did, let me know down in the comment section below. If you like this video, make sure you like this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel so we can keep making these fun math videos for you and for everyone else. So, as always, thanks for watching. Hi, I'm Sean Gannon, and this is Minute Math. And we have here the... <laughs> Hi, I'm Sean Gannon, and this is Minute Math, and we have twice now.